Early childhood trauma uh, makes up over 80% of mental health issues in this country. What went on in my life was a direct link to who I became as an adult. The brain is developing when we're kids and when kids are going every day uh, living in fear, that's the way the brain develops and uh, that just brings it forward into, into adulthood. We know that a large, very large proportion of mental illnesses and mental health problems start at a young age. So I think that the younger we start, you know, talking about it, the, the better youth are informed. I think that the better the chances are that they are doing the right things. Plus que 75% de patients commence à avoir des problèmes pendant leur enfance et l'adolescence qui ne sont pas nécessairement reconnus. Alors c'est particulièrement important aujourd'hui de vérifier s'il y a des signes ou des symptômes pour être capable d'intervenir à une façon précoce au plus tôt possible auprès des jeunes qui vont développer plus tard des problèmes. Nous, je peux vous dire un peu de psychiatrie, on est c'est de parler à nos enfants et à nos patients, puis de les conseiller euh, avec beaucoup d'attention comment ils vont se présenter à l'école, comment ils vont répondre aux questions de leurs euh, camarades. Mental illness is something that people don't want to acknowledge that they have because it's difficult. And that denial isn't, isn't a helpful piece. That denial is prolonging some of the struggle. If we can address stigma when people are younger, that can have lots of effects in the future, right? If we reduce the stigma, people can get help earlier, especially when they're younger. This, this has a much better uh, chance that people will live a much more fuller and happier lives in the future. I think what's really, really important is the earlier people come for help, the easier and the faster the treatment is. Getting help for that early on is probably the most preventative thing we can do longer term. And teaching kids and parents uh, to notice the signs of when it is creeping up again in the future. Mental health is in a continuum and we have to face it in a continuum and to support youth and young adults who are not necessarily well equipped to deal with that later in life. Intervention should not stop at the age of 18. Many of these therapies are helping the youth develop resilience and is helping them to deal better with some of these issues. If we do not do that, we're afraid that these young people will have problems in the future. The next step is the harder step though, which is making sure these young people connect to resources where they're actually going to get the help that they need. Sometimes they can do it alone, but oftentimes they need the support of their parents or a caregiver or a friend who will actually go with them and be with them while they take this big step. I think that if we were more open about it as young people, um, and not writing it off as angst or um, something you're being overdramatic about. And just allowing people to be healthy and figure out what that means for them. One of the things that we really need to understand is the, is the severity of the impact and the commitment to change. A lot of times when people have mental health issues, it's uh, they want somebody to fix them. And the reality is, is the only person that's gonna fix them is the individual and it's gonna take a commitment every day. And people that suffer from mental health issues have to feel comfortable to talk about it, and people who surround them have to be able to listen to it and listen to what their needs are and be able to support them. For that to happen, we just need to start talking about it.